You're looking at archival footage released by the Kennedy Library this summer of President Kennedy vacationing at his family home in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. We're joined here on American History TV by Lawrence Knudsen, author of Away from the White House, Presidential Escapes, Retreats and Vacations. Larry Knudsen, you covered the White House and Washington for many years. Is a president ever really away from his job? Never, uh, never really. Uh, they certainly try, and they have since the first president. Uh, George Washington uh, broke off from uh, his desk in Philadelphia, and when the coach and four horses went home to uh, uh, Mount Vernon. Um, they haven't. Um, president Kennedy's uh, uh, speechwriter and special counsel, Theodore Sorensen, uh, said what many presidents have said, that a president's office is wherever the president may be, because unlike Congress or the Supreme Court, the presidency never adjourns. Well, what role does, does politics play in presidential vacations, presidential getaways? I'm not sure what. I think the need to get away is uh, probably predominant, um, as we have seen in recent presidencies. Uh, if you have your own home, you tend to go to it. Otherwise, like President Obama, uh, you go to a, a place that interests you, and you probably, because of security uh, concerns, have to get a rented property. Do you think it's just the, the press or the, the public? Um, does, does the public understand that the president needs to get away from the pressures of the job, or is it just the press that keeps focusing on on, um, on what the president is doing on vacation and what's happening in Washington and elsewhere around the world? I think both. I think, um, I think the press reacts to what uh, the public thinks and vice versa. Um, certainly, uh, perception is a lot. Um, the optics of the situation, when President George W.H. Bush um, vacation to Kennebunkport while uh, Saddam Hussein of Iraq invaded uh, uh, Kuwait, uh, Bush uh, said, vowed, that he would not be tied down uh, to a dictator's schedule, that he would go on with his own very active vacation. And for, uh, for 25 days, that's exactly what he did. As we do this interview at the end of August in 2014 presidential President Obama coming off his vacation, and he was criticized by a number in the press and elsewhere about the, the number of rounds of golf he played. In your book, you write that um, uh, President Kennedy, you call President Kennedy a stealth golfer. What did you mean by that? He was a stealth golfer because uh, he was fully aware that President Eisenhower had been blistered for the amount of time he spent on the golf course. Uh, Eisenhower was an incessant uh, golfer. He really, really loved it. Uh, and because of him, thousands of Americans uh, took up the game. But Kennedy vigilantly kept that game out of public sight, even though those who knew him say he was a quite able golfer with a natural swing and a powerful but somewhat erratic drive. And he played both as candidate and as president-elect but photographers are mostly barred from the uh, uh, from the course, and few outsiders knew about it. A, as president, he played also, but a bad back curtailed his play. And looking at the the video, the film of the the Kennedy vacation on the on Hyannisport with the the Kennedy compound there at Hyannisport, it seemed almost like a, like a summer camp compared to what other presidents have done on their vacations. What sort of activities did uh, John F. Kennedy do? Time Magazine in August 1962 said that not since the days of Theodore Roosevelt had the nation witnessed what the magazine called such a heart-pounding, muscle-aching round of vacation activities. At Hyannisport, which was itself besieged by hordes of curious tourists, the president, his children, his nephews, his nieces, scrambled on the lawn, splashed in the water, and at times, when I wrote about it, I thought it resembled sort of a miniature Olympics. Uh, time described it this way. Since sitting down, 
is somehow considered bad form. Touch football fills in the so-called rest periods between tennis, swimming, water skiing, sailing, and dragging. It described dragging as an attempt to avoid drowning while clinging to a life preserver being towed by the president's schooner, Victoria. You talked about what Time Magazine said. Look Magazine put a picture of the president on its cover of the president on a big golf cart loaded down with kids, nieces, nephews, and, and a couple of his kids as well. What did this image say about President Kennedy? It certainly says it was certainly appealing. It was an image that played all over the country. There's one in this book with probably more, a dozen or more laughing children clinging to the golf cart as it spun around the lawns at the uh, Kennedy compound. Um, the owner of a local candy store said that it didn't take 15 minutes after his helicopter landed for Kennedy, Kennedy to appear often on the golf cart with a band of children for licorice, chocolates, and lollipops. Before we wrap up, could you give us a couple of the, your notable, a quick look at some of the notable other presidential vacationers you, you write about? There have been many. Uh, Washington, of course, set the uh, president and the standard, and the standard being that the uh, job follows the president wherever he goes. In Washington's case, that meant supervision of the building of a new capital city, one that is named for him. Um, there are many others, and you could think of images. Um, Kennedy sailing, Eisenhower golfing, Jerry Ford skiing, Jimmy Carter on the softball field, um, any number of things. Presidents fishing. Often early 20th century presidents like Coolidge and Hoover fishing in three-piece suits. Are there any of those images that are any, in any way controversial? You write in the book about Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt liking to chop down trees on his property just to hear the tree fall. Um, and we, of course, knew George W. Bush was always clearing brush out at his ranch. To, outside of golf and those sorts of activities, have presidents been criticized by the activities they pursue on their vacations? Sure, and sometimes uh, with a little bit of uh, tongue-in-cheek. President Theodore Roosevelt who won the Nobel Peace Prize uh, for uh, in the summer of 1905 for monitoring the uh, uh, the end of the Russo-Japanese War while on vacation, got a newspaper scolding for the New York Times. The reason? Uh, he needed a break. The break appeared on the waters of uh, Oyster Bay, and it was a early U.S. Navy submarine appropriately enough, called the plunger. Roosevelt went down on it for 55 minutes. And then the New York Times said he had needlessly risked a valuable life in a collapsible and otherwise dangerous device. The book is Away from the White House, Presidential Escapes, Retreats, and Vacations. We've been speaking with Larry Knutson, the author. Thanks for being with us here on American History TV. Thank you.